Hey, what's up everyone? Glad you could join me. In this episode, I'm going to be doing a lampshade. This is going to be a 3D printable and it's going to be hex shaped. It's going to be a really cool contemporary look. So we're going to start in making this, by, making this in Blender. We're going to start right now. Hi everyone, welcome to my show, Nathan's 3D Factory. My name is Nathan Adams. In this show, I do Blender 3D models and I export them for 3D printables. If you like my stuff, make sure to go to Shembol.com for all my other video series. And also, subscribe for more. And make sure to hit that notification bell for every time that I give you a new video. You can also check out my stuff by going to Facebook.com slash Studio if you want to give me a like on Facebook. You can follow me also at Shembol Studio on Twitter. And finally, you can follow me at Shembol Studio on Instagram as well. You are watching Nathan's 3D Factory. Okay, so first we are going into our default scene, and then I decided to add this sphere. This sphere is roughly about 61 millimeters in diameter. So this sphere is going to represent the diameter of your typical bulb that, that I'm going to be placing in there. So for the typical size for this one, it's an A19 incandescent. I know we're not using incandescents anymore, but this seems to be a pretty standard size. So now I'm going to be adding a circle that's going to go a little bit a little bit beyond that. Oh, again, I'm, I'm narrating this after the fact. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that it's compatible with a multiple of six on it. So this part right here is the round part that's going to go so it'll be able to fit around the widest part of that bulb. Now I'm adding a hexagon shape. And then what I want to do is I want to take this hexagon shape and join it to this other circular shape. So the, the hexagon, what I did was I added a circle with only six points in it. So those two, I'm going to join together now. Now I'm going to start joining some vertices together. And I counted these off so that they were every so often. I think it was every six vertices because I did a 36 vertex point circle. There we go. So yeah, I'm just counting them off, and then just connecting them as I get those count offs there. Now, once I'm able to count all these off, then what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to subdivide those edges on the hexagon shape. And so I subdivided them, I believe, four or five times. I can't remember exactly how many times there. So. But uh, the ultimate goal is that I'm going to bridge those edge loops. There we go. Hitch on my nose. Do that so I can just bridge it. Okay, I did something funky there. I think I forgot to subdivide the edge there. Keep going with those. Okay, I accidentally did a subdivide smooth on that one. That's why that one came out looking a little funky. Yeah. So I'm still going through, making sure that I have all the edges subdivided, subdivided correctly. That one looks good. There we go. Do a few more. Just keep bridging them. done with this step here now. Okay, now I'm going to save that. Go into step, step two now. Navigate to my spot. There. Saving that. There we go. Now I got a hex left. And now on to step two. Step two now. All right, we're gonna extrude the edges of that hexagon up. We're gonna do that, I think it was 100 millimeters up. 
Okay. Going around and examining the edges there. And now, I'm going to copy that hexagon and then I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to scale it in 0.25. So I'm not extruding it. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to make another hexagon shape there. And then from that new hexagon shape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude inwards with it. As well as, now first of all, I'm going to connect those edges. And I'm just doing them two edges at a time. And so then I should have six arms coming into it, into that inner hexagon shape. And then from that inner hexagon shape, because I have those arms interrupting the flow of the of that edge loop, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to have to get all the edge loops, and then get all the connecting pieces as well. Then once that's all done, then I'll have another edge loop that's actually continuous. It's not going to be branching off all crazy like I just did. In all honesty, I probably should have done that step first and then connected them. What are you going to do? Okay. Now I'm just making sure that it's to a size that I want, a size that'll hold up in the 3D printing as well. Now I'm going to save that. And we're going to go to the next step now. Step three. There we go. So step three, what I'm doing now is that I'm going to take some edge loops on this edge on the sides of this, and then I'm going to start cutting holes. So I did 10 loop cuts there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these with the edge ring instead of the edge loop, and then subdivide, the, uh, subdivide those by one. There we go. So now I'm going to start taking some of these edges, some of these faces I should say, and I'm doing these four at a time. So originally I wanted this to be a little bit asymmetrical, but then I, I started thinking about it and it started coming up with a pattern here, you know? There we go. So I'm taking it on each of the corners and just doing two faces each side of the corner. And then I'm going to do every other row of doing something different here. So the next row down, instead of doing it on the corners, I'm doing it in the center of the faces. As you, as you can see right there. There we go. And then, pattern is going to continue on the corner, except instead of doing it uh, two and two, it's going to be one and three. As you can see there. And as I was doing this random stuff, then I started to realize, yeah, there's going to be a pattern there, I think. But... I sort of like the pattern once I got it going. There we go. The next row down, I'm going to do the same pattern as, as two rows up here. Once I figured it out. There. Now I figured it out. Well... I figured it out, ish. There, then I started to delete those faces. <laughs> so I'm gonna continue around. This step is quite a bit length. Uh, this step is quite a bit lengthier. So, um, so bear with me on that. And then I decided to do two and two on this one again, after I realized that there was some sort of a pattern happening. There we go. Do the same thing right there with the four center, uh, center faces. So on this, I'm just trying to select all of them as I'm rota rotating around the lamp shade. 
there we go. And then, that one and three pattern, I'm taking the other way this time. So that way it throws a little bit of asymmetry into it. Just to kind of make things interesting. Delete those faces. You can see that pattern going down the whole lampshade. And that's the two and two on the corner again. Okay, next row, I almost had it. So one thing that I've been doing is I've been doing all these face selections. You know, with vertex selections, edge selections, and face selections, one of the really cool things is to do the comma with the select. It's the comma, no, it's the, it's the control with the selection instead of doing shift select. So then what I'll do is that I'll take that. It's been a really nice method. Now, step four, I did right in the middle of my statement there. <laughs> I interrupted myself. So you can tell I'm just totally discombobulated. So on this step, what I'm doing is that I got solidify. And I tried this one a few times because I wasn't quite liking what was going on in the upper part of it. And I was wondering, what am I doing wrong, you know? Then I started to realize that as I was doing this step, I needed to get a little bit of a rim on this. I couldn't just stop it and then just have it solidified. And, oh, yeah, that's fine. No, no, no. Couldn't do that. So what I did was I did these edge cuts here, or these loop cuts. I did them so that I slid them at 0.75. And then I started filling in this stuff with the grid fill tool. I love the grid fill tool, by the way. Fantastic tool. And then I deleted the faces so that what happened was that I got this nice rim around the edge. And then that solved the problem of solidifying it properly. And I thought it looked really cool doing it that way anyway. So, you know what? It's, it's awesome. So I had a bit of a plan here on this, uh, on this one, but I was also doing a bit of impromptu artwork. It's the best kind of artwork. It's the impromptu type of stuff. All I improvise, really awesome stuff. Get a lot of great music like that. A lot of great artwork like that too. So, but all in all, this one came out, I think, very well planned out after the fact. Came out looking really nice. I had a fun time with this one. So anyway, so I'm down to the end of this one. Almost there, get those last four faces deleted. So, one thing I didn't do earlier was that I did not rename this object. So, I went through and I renamed this so that this would be the proper name, Hex Lamp. So, but there's the end result right there. Um, so I have it so solidified, and I have this so it's a two mil thickness. And there you go. That was how I, how I got this Hex Lamp idea. So, just so you know, I don't just do impromptu work here. I also do stuff that's custom work for you. So, um, if you want to do a custom work for me on this on this uh, this video channel, you let me know in the comments below. So, I really enjoy doing this. I also enjoy doing custom work for you as well. So, make sure to leave in the comments below or email me. I also have that in the description below. So, thank you so much for watching this show. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making this. You all have a wonderful day.